This is the Pet Central Podcast. Let's make some profits. Hello and welcome back to the Pet Central Formula One Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Parker. And today I've got Mary Ann Wakefield back on the pod. We are chatting about the Hungarian Grand Prix. Another win for Max Verstappen. Uh, Red Bull beating the record set by McLaren for the most consecutive number of wins. 12, which stood since 1988 which was the year that I was born. So it's 34 years, um, <laughs> almost almost 35. Uh, no, 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 35 years, sorry. Because, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was it was a, an interesting weekend. Um, but before I get into that, or we get into that, Mary Ann, welcome back to the pod. Thanks, Sean. How are you? How, you your voice sounds a little bit... Uh, <laughs> your voice sounds a little bit uh, um, deep, and 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 like you've been shouting this weekend. Were you were you upset? Obviously, I mean, a little bit disappointed by Lewis Hamilton. Of course, I was. I was so upset. Um, we have no pace. There's no pace on that car. Um, Saturday, of course, was amazing, and. All Mercedes fans were like, here we are. Thank you. Um, Sunday, yeah, just, you know, no more pace. What can we do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was quite a roller coaster um, that obviously Mercedes fans were, were on. So if we just recap, obviously Lewis Hamilton, fantastic uh, lap in qualifying to, to grab pole position. Um, possibly... You know, more it, uh, kind of um, what was evident was more of the seven-time world champion's driving skill than perhaps the car. You know, because that's what we found out on Saturday or, or rather on Sunday that the race pace wasn't there. Um, although kind of later on into the race, the the medium tires switched on for both Russell and Hamilton and they were then charging after a couple of um, guys to, to gain more points. But... You know, it was perfect. It was perfectly set up on the Sunday or for the Sunday, at least. You know, Hamilton on pole, Verstappen second, and and then Sunday came and Hamilton was going backwards at the start of the race. <laughs> um, Verstappen taking the lead. Uh, Oscar Piastri, uh, absolutely fantastic start, jumped into second place, um, and Lando Norris in the other McLaren followed him. Another fantastic result for McLaren, uh, Landon Norris, his second, um, second place in a row. Um, let's just touch on, on, on Max, uh, Mary Ann, and that 30-second margin that he had at the end of the, of the race. Um, flawless from the Dutch driver again. Anything that you want to, to add about his performance or what you saw this weekend? Um, obviously, Quali gave him a bit of a, a shake-up. I think also most of the teams with Quali, there was that new rule where you had just, uh, Q3 was hard, then Q2 was soft tyres only, etc. Um, so that shook up quite a few teams. But on Sunday, I mean, he was he was ready. And I mean, from the get-go, it was his turn, the inside turn. So, yeah, Lewis just really messed up there. So he took advantage and, yeah... Yeah, and Hamilton struggled, you know, for most of the race. He complained to to Bono quite a few times about the lack of pace um, from the Mercedes. If we just recap the podium places, it was Max Verstappen, Lando Norris, and then Sergio Perez. Um, he qualified ninth. Uh, the, um, oh, you know, a, um, a lot of pressure on the Mexican after the news of Daniel Ricciardo taking. Nick de Vries' seat at, at Alpha Tauri. And we've now heard that um, Ricardo is eyeing Perez's um, seat in 2025. Both Verstappen and Perez are, are contracted to Red Bull until, until 2025. Um, so there was a lot to, to, to prove. And I mean, Perez, unfortunately, he had, you know, a bit of a, a topsy-turvy weekend. No, no, no. In fact, I would, I would go so far as to say that he had a terrible weekend because... He dropped the wheel on the grass in free practice one. And obviously that meant that um, most of the grid actually didn't have much time to sort of get it, to kind of do any fast laps um, and yeah. to and to really pull, you know, 
um, any data. So luckily, when he went into FP2, the car was sorted and um, and he was sort of on a level playing field. But, um, you know, I mean, and when we, when we see the pace that Max showed on Sunday, the margin by which he, he, he delivered his victory, again, just goes to show that Perez should be doing a lot better in that RB19. Yeah, he should be. I think his qualifying is the main issue there um, because I feel that he needs to be up in the grid places to get <clears throat> to get sort of where Max is. Um, it's his grid placement that really is an issue. Um, I think yesterday he was lucky though because a lot of cars showed that they didn't have pace like the like his car. Um, Aston Martin wasn't anywhere. Um, McLaren obviously was really uh, did really well, but. The other teams, it was sort of easier for him to get past. But in races before, we've seen that it hasn't been that easy. So, yeah, we let's see what happens next week because it's a very, very um, fast track next week on the weekend. Yeah, it should have been an easy one too for Red Bull, but you know that that wasn't the case. And Perez, he, he leaves himself so much to do during the race. You know, as you mentioned, he that he doesn't do very, very well in qualifying. Um, for the past for, for the past several races before Hungary, he's, he's even gone out um, at, um, in Q3, you know. Yeah. So just just being quite disappointing. And this is at, there's that added pressure of, of Ricardo being quite vocal about, you know, going after his, his seat. So, yeah, a lot, to, a lot for the Mexican driver to obviously contemplate and he needs to pull up his socks. Um, you know, otherwise, you know, we know how ruthless Red Bull can be in terms of cutting their drivers. We've seen it happen to Pierre Gasly, to Alex Albon. And yeah, you know, Perez definitely has a, um, a target on his back from, in, in, you know, in terms of uh, Dan Ricardo's seat. Um, another fantastic performance by Lando Norris, Mary Ann. What, just what do you make of that, McLaren? Um, can you chat to us a little bit about the changes that we saw, obviously, um, at Silverstone? Or, I mean, actually, Lando had the changes to his car um, previously, yes. right? It was Piastri that only received the, the new upgrades at, um, at Silverstone. But just what makes or what made the McLaren so fast at the Angada ring? Lando made it fast. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I think now they've really, you know, they've really, they, somehow they can extrapolate the data much better than Merck or whoever else because they knew that the whole year the car wasn't driving properly. It couldn't turn, it couldn't do this and that. And with the, with the upgrades, they've worked with that data so well. And a lot of people are saying it's got to do with who's on the pit bull, changing the engineers. And you can see it's it's got the pace now. Before, perhaps, they had corrected the, the car turning issues and whatever, but now it's got pace to go in the race as well. So we're not, we're not getting un, out of top 10 um, placements for them. He did, he did very, very well. Oscar did very well as well. A lot of people are saying, yeah, well, you know, it was a bit unfortunate that Lando pitted first because Oscar would have done well. But I think it's neither here nor there. I just think in general for McLaren, it's great to see where they are. And it definitely feels, a lot of people almost felt like Silverstone was a one-off. They weren't going to do it again. And even they said they don't think they're going to come anywhere um, this weekend. And they did well. So, yeah, I think, I think they've got the pace. They understand the car, the data. That's the issue here. And um, I, I foresee them doing well on the weekend. Yeah, it definitely seems as if they're going to have a fast race car for the rest of the year. Um, yeah, touching on on what you mentioned about, you know, the, the team deciding to undercut Piastri by putting Norris first. Um, obviously, Piastri had good position at that time, but is that a genuine case of, you know, um, Norris being the number one driver in McLaren and therefore... He gets the you know better calls and and those types of things go his way. Well, after after the race, Zach did say it's more of they didn't do it intentionally. It was just more strategy at the point at that time because they were also working with the tires and they were hoping that the tires would stay as far as they could in, for so many laps. So they saying that no, it was just you know sort of 
it was what it was. It wasn't any strategy or, or any preference to Lando. Um, so, I mean, as the outsiders, obviously we think so. Um, but yeah, I think, I think they're all sort of, you know, if Oscar had stayed where he was and, and, and I, in the race, he did say, what do you want me to do here? Because he could have gone past Lando. Um, but I think, you know, just staying behind each other, I think that was the most important thing. Yeah, they definitely wanted to get, you know, both drivers as high up as they could. And, um, and that's what they did. I mean, second and, and fifth, um, okay. Brilliant, brilliant um, weekend again by, by McLaren. Lewis Hamilton finished fourth um, just behind Sergio Perez, who, who he was chasing down towards um, the dying laps. If he had had maybe another three or four laps, possibly Hamilton could have overtaken the, um, the, 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 the Mexican driver. What did you, yeah, what did you make of Hamilton's weekend? Obviously, his 104th pole position, um, you know, by far the most of any driver. And then, yeah, you know, fourth place finish in the end. Um, yeah, what what do you make of the the British drivers' uh, weekend? I was really hoping that he would be third um, at the end of it, but yeah. So if you watch the if you watch Quali and then of course the race, a lot of people said in at the end of the race the car came alive because it was it wasn't that heavy; it had less fuel. And they're saying the same thing on Saturday. Obviously, had less fuel. That's why he did well in in the last in the quali. Um, so that's also something to look at. But yeah, I was really yeah. If he had two or three more laps, could he have done it? But then also, what would have happened with the tires? Um, because the tires on all the teams was, I think, at that point, if it had to be longer, they would have had to do a pit stop. Um, so yeah, I thought he, I thought he had a good weekend and then the race, it was just, you could hear his frustration when he said, I just, I can't go faster. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing what I can. And I think that's where, yeah, he gets frustrated. Obviously, I mean, I would as well. Um, but yeah, there's, there's obviously lack of pace and I will be very surprised if they yeah do well this weekend because there is a lack of pace issue. It's just it's really bad now. Yeah, the the must um the Merc really struggled in the slow to medium corners. And you know, even yeah, even at the end it was just um a little bit too late for for Hamilton. But yeah, good to see him, you know, get get that pole position. And obviously it meant a lot to him. The um the crowd was also ecstatic when he was doing the the press conference after after quali and uh, yeah a decent result in the end i think for hamilton if you consider how slow or yeah how much faster the mclarens were than um than the the mercs again you know quite quite interesting how there's the works team who you know are struggling against a, a customer racing team because obviously we know that mclaren uses mercedes engines um george russell finishing sixth and he Benefited from the five-second penalty that um, Charles Leclerc received for speeding in the pit lane. Uh, good result for f um, for George. We we kind of yeah. I mean, again, just looking at Mercedes not being up there to kind of battle with um, you know the guys for the podium places. Ferrari seventh and eighth. Uh, Leclerc and Carlos Sainz respectively, and then the Aston Martins, um, Fernando Alonso, Lance Stroll, ninth and tenth. So yeah, a bit of a, a clear pattern there in terms of, you know, uh, you know, teams finishing, you know, kind of in in similar or you know, um, sort of drivers from the same teams finishing in similar positions. Um, Ferrari again, you know, every every review we chat about their strategy and how calls are made and how they, they uh, you, there's a lot of indecisiveness that comes across from you know us watching the race. Was that was that the same again this weekend for you? Um, at one point, I thought, okay, they've got this, and then I, I'm not sure if it was Charles where they where they said, um, "What do you think?" He's like, "No, I'm staying out." And then the next thing, he boxes. So I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Um, and then, of course, this slow pit stop. Um, I don't know what's going on with Ferrari. I honest, I just feel like I've just you know the drivers of the they they. They they got it, but they they put crew, they put wall, just keeps on letting them down. I really thought they were going to do well. 
I thought their strategy would be on point. They looked like they were okay after the first pit stop. And then, yeah, I don't know. There's not much more to say about Ferrari. I just want them to to figure it out. Yeah, and it's the basics that they are messing up on. You know, those are, I mean, pit stops, you know, things that teams practice, you know, so many times, you know, in order to get that perfect rhythm. Yes, obviously, in a race situation, things are, are different, but these are professionals, you know, and the technician should be able to do it quickly, you know, and not spend, you know, seven or eight seconds, um, you know, busy changing a wheel or, yeah, it was just, it was it was amateur hour in the Ferrari pit crew. Juxtapose that with, you know, Red Bull, um, Pitin, Perez, and the one of the fastest pit stops this season, 1.9 seconds, absolutely blitz. You know, so uh, again, we see the performances by Red Bull, you know, in in the pit uh, lane, and then we see them obviously, you know, in in comparison to Ferrari, and it just maybe amplifies those um, mistakes even even more. So yeah, so that was the um, the top ten. Uh, Aston Martin, yeah, also winning kind of switched on this weekend, um, and it's quite interesting because I, I uh, you tagged me in that Alonso poster on TikTok and. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, I <laughs> think things didn't go to plan for him. He actually had a bit of a, a quiet race. Obviously, the Aston, you know, not not able to really battle with any of the of the front runners. But um, if we just go back to the start of the race, maybe, and quite an interesting start. Obviously, Joe Guanyu um, going into the back of was it Esteban Ocon, who then yeah. um, who then obviously went into the air. I think he said it was four or five meters up into the air. His seat broke in, in, in two, and um, and he also damaged Pierre Gasly's car, which obviously meant that both of the Alpines, so sad, were were out at the start of the race. That was compromised Daniel Ricciardo's race because he was involved in that melee as well. Um, and so yeah, so so Daniel had to you know had to sort of struggle um, through the race, and and really it, it became a bit of a, a testing exercise for him in 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 the Alpha Tauri. Um, what was the kind of feedback from from sort of Ocon and Gasly after the race? Yeah, you know, afterwards I was watching these socials and they were just like, you know, they just they just didn't do well. And and I mean, it's not really their fault, but I think in general over the weekend they weren't actually doing well. Saturday they didn't do well in quality, which normally they do. Um, so I was quite surprised with that. And yeah, I just think it was it was just one of those things. But both cars out that was terrible. Um, I kind of felt for them. And Danny Rick, I think he drove. You know, even though what happened, he came he came thirteenth, which is I think better than most for for AlphaTauri. So yeah, I think he actually drove okay. Uh, he did very well in qualifying. I think. Um, you know, practice and qualifying and stuff like that. But yeah, it's we'll see. Mm. Yeah, shame. I, I think I think everyone just breathed a massive sigh when they saw the Alpines out. I mean, as you said, like as you mentioned, it wasn't any fault of their own. And uh, and I did see that Joe did you know put out something and just um, apologize to to the grid. Um, yeah, that was the Hungarian Grand Prix. I think we've gotten used to the fact now that Max is going to walk away with it, even if he's not on on pole position. That that RB nineteen in his hands, you know, is just a a beast. And we need to see Perez do the same. We need to see him really step up now. Um, you know, with Daniel there, and yes, obviously many drivers on the grid want to have that second seat at Red Bull. And you know, we also know how fast an F one season goes. I mean, we almost had the halfway mark. Uh, of mm. the season, the summer break is coming up in a couple of weeks. So yeah, um, let's do a rating out of ten. Where would you place the Hungarian Grand Prix? I actually enjoyed this one because of the skill and all of that. So I would give it about an eight. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was it was really great to see how the cars navigated their way around that track. You know, the drivers nearly need to be on it, uh, the slow to medium corners, and just. Um, I I was I, I kind of was caught off guard in terms of watching Perez um, make his way. I think there was there were a couple of stints where he was flying, you know, because obviously yeah. he needed to make up uh, places. And that Red Bull did look very very quick. 
um, through the slow to medium corners. The director didn't spend quite a bit of time or didn't have spent spend quite a, a lot of time on Max because I think he's lead and he was really badly no one. He was just kind of lapping people. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, Mary Ann, thank you so much for joining me and yeah, have a good week. Thanks, you too.